The following is a presentation of the Chicago Bears Network and ChicagoBears.com. Download the Chicago Bears official mobile app for up-to-the-minute Bears content every day. And now, welcome to Bears All Access, your all-access pass into Chicago Bears football. Bears All Access is brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Athletico Physical Therapy and CDW. Pleasant well, good evening, everybody, and welcome in with my broadcast partner from News Radio 780 and 1059 FM, WBBM, Chicago Bears Super Bowl winner, Tom Thayer. I'm Jeff Jonagak. Good to have you alongside with our producer tonight, Adam Staszynski, in our Chicago Score Studios. Dan Barilli and Jordan Treadup helping us out as always. Coming up tonight at 610, we'll discuss the Pro Football Hall of Fame finalists for 2023. It includes. Bears great Devin Hester will talk with the Athletics Dan Pompey, who's on that member and a member of that committee, a seniors committee and the uh, longtime Hall of Fame selection committee for his input on all of that. And we'll also be joined by former Notre Damer and Minnesota Vikings analyst Pete Bursich, who does the call on the Vikings broadcast. That'll be coming up at 645. And uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't kick things off with a happy 100th birthday to Virginia. Hallis McCaskey, big Tom Thayer. How you feeling this evening? And how about that? Happy birthday, Virginia. Amazing. She's an amazing lady. She's an amazing person. And um, so much respect for her as a business leader, as a mother, as everything that she's been able to accomplish in her long history, unbelievable witness to life. Um, uh, you know, I, I love her, and I'm I'm so happy for her. All right, a lot of things going on. We're gonna we're gonna circle back to this in a second, but uh, first things first, and and that's the the story of the week in the National Football League. Uh, Demar Han, Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills, the safety still in a University of Cincinnati Medical Center, Tom. But the progress today reported by his doctors. They did a news conference uh, with the national media today. Uh, the Buffalo Bills were back at practice. Uh, his father on Zoom. Talked to the team today, made them feel a heck of a lot better about things and where it's headed in his recovery. He is squeezing hands. He is writing notes. He wanted to know who won the game. And doctors told him, you know, you are the winner. You won life. And uh, he has still a long way to go. Uh, but this was important. And the Bills back at practice getting ready for the Patriots because that's what DeMar would have wanted, according to his father. Of course he does. That's what every player wants out of their teammates is these guys want to uh, achieve the ultimate success and the goal that they were trying to accomplish since the day they got together at the beginning of training camp. But one thing I'm really proud of is the doctor's recognition of the prepared staff of the Buffalo Bills. When they had an instance like this that happened on the field and how remarkable they were about understanding of every one of their duties. You know, Jeff, you and I get to see the practices and what these guys do in order to be prepared on a weekly basis for an instant like this that you hope never happens but for when it does happen and how prepared they were, I think that was as highly complimentary by the doctors that we saw out of the Cincinnati Medical Facility. And um, I ad admire those people because they were first on scene. They were the ones that put everything into place for the continuous uh, recuperation from this to happen. Exactly. And Sean McDermott today uh, really complimenting assistant athletic trainer Denny Kellington, who administrated life-saving CPR on DeMar Hamlin. And this is a quote from McDermott, the courage that that took. You talk about a, a real leader, a real hero in saving DeMar's life. Uh, I just admire his strength. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I got choked up there, but um, that's uh, that's from from Sean McDermott today on uh, that training staff, and uh, there's so many different levels of this too. And then, then just the psychological aspect of it. We heard yesterday, and we'll hear some comments. We'll, we'll play those later on in the show today. Just the honesty and uh, the real sincerity and the honesty from David Montgomery and Sam Muster for yesterday, Tom, about what they were going through and how this hits them as a football player. It affected every single person that was watching the game, whether you're a football player or not, because you saw the worst-case scenario happen within an instance right before your very eyes. And when I was talking earlier in the week, I said we went from watching a game to real life in, in a matter of an instance. And so and the support that he's gotten from around the world and around the United States, um, from athletes and non-athletes and, and every 
walk of life possible. I think, uh, you know, it's admirable, but it's also a reflection of what type of person this guy is. Because Demir Hamlin has a great reputation of being a super caring, uh, cautious, you know, self-conscious person and about the things that he wants to accomplish for other people. Right, the the toy drive uh, that he started with 2500 bucks a couple years ago. Right. It's over $6 right. million. Dollars. He's got a lot of toys to be handing out, Tom. Coming up. Well, so. I, you know, listen to a little representation or hearing a representation of the family saying that not everything will be spent on toys, but they're going to figure out a way to help a lot of people with that. So, congratulations to the people who uh, went above and beyond the call of duty. Right. He said when he was drafted that uh, he wanted to make a difference, and this was a platform to make a difference, and he's doing that uh, in in uh, and and in recovery now. And so, uh, this will be an interesting. Uh, crossroads now for the league and what they do tom and we'll talk to dan pompey about it too coming up here at 6 10 but uh, what to do what to do now with that game if they're going to play it is there going to be a neutral site are they going to add more playoff teams there's a lot of ideas being floated around and it does impact uh, what happens here moving forward because there's no easier answer to it and it'll be interesting to see what the nfl and the nfl players association comes up with if they play that game, it can't be at a neutral site. It has to be exactly repl- as close to being replicated as it possibly can. And with all the factors and the outcomes that um, are <coughs> going to affect the NFL and the playoffs, they have to play that game in Cincinnati. Yeah. Well, if, if they, they play do. it. If they yeah, do. Yeah. Right, if, they, right. if they play it. Okay. Back to Virginia McCaskey on her birthday. This we're going to play. This was from a look at the history of the league through the eyes of four iconic female owners, one of them Virginia McCaskey, of course, Martha Firestone Ford, Norma Hunt, and Patricia Rooney. It aired in 2019, produced by NFL Films, a snippet of uh, the life of a Chicago Bear owner, uh, but a daughter of George Hallis. The Bears have been my life all these years. I feel very blessed and grateful I don't want them to to um, look on me as some little old lady who is just kind of hanging around. I want them to know how much I care about the Bears and, and them. I went to a Bears game, and she is an adamant fan of the game. There's no talking. I said something to George McCaskey, and he's like, "Shh, shh mom's mom's watching the game. We gotta wait. Uh-huh. You gotta wait till." Uh, and wait, wait until the talent on the field, wait till a commercial. She's not, you know. So we're sitting there, and it's, you know, 10, 12, play, drive, whatever. And then finally there's a talent on the field. They do commercials, and then I go down. How you doing, Ms. McCaskey? Oh, hey, Charles. You know, we, we talk for 30 seconds, and then commercial break is over. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, let me, mm, let me watch this game. Virginia watched as her father both played for and coached the Bears. The one job Virginia never expected to take on was running the Bears. But when her brother Muggs, who had been president of the team, died unexpectedly in 1979, her father George set a plan for the Bears' future once he was no longer around. I always knew my younger brother would be the one to take over, so I had the best of all worlds. I had all the perks of being associated with the Chicago Bears and none of the responsibility that changed when Muggs died. Well, Dad finally got around to his estate planning. There was a small paragraph that in matters relating to football operations, Virginia would have the final word. And to me, that was his vote of confidence. George Hallis passes away on October 31st, 1983. And now mom is thrust into this role that um, she never wanted. Well, the alternative would have been to sell, as several people advised me. And I couldn't imagine doing that. What would I do with money and selling a legacy, an inheritance? It just didn't seem the right thing to do after all that my dad and mother had put into it their whole lives. I loved my dad. And his life was football, and so it became my life. A Lifetime of Sundays. It was an outstanding uh, feature done by NFL Films, uh, looking at the league through everything. Eight championships and 30 Hall of Famers. She knew them all. She knows them all. And uh, happy birthday, Virginia. She's an amazing person. I mean, I associate her 
more with life than football almost because when I came aboard with the Bears and I got to meet her and then my mom got to go to some luncheons with her and she felt like she was in the presence of greatness (laughs) being around Virginia McCaskey. And it's the way I felt about my mom and it's the way I feel about Virginia. Awesome lady. She's done a lot for all of us, obviously, big time, and uh, we're forever grateful. And uh, here's another happy happy birthday, another trip around the sun for Virginia McCaskey. Coming up after this break here on Bears All Access is brought to you by IGS Energy. We'll be joined by Dan Pompey. We'll talk Hall of Fame and the Bears and more. Coming up after this break on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. We love clean hits and clean energy. IGS Energy now offers 100% green electricity and carbon neutral natural gas. Because every good choice adds up to a better world. We are IGS Energy. Join us and let's go green for good. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. Calling all Bears fans. Get the ultimate VIP fan package at Soldier Field this season with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket, pre-game hospitality, appearances from Bears legends, and more all in one place. Make the most of your game day experience at Soldier Field this season. Get your VIP fan package by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com today. It's game time, but before Terry can enjoy his broad, he's got one last thing to digest, an impending work deadline. Luckily, CDW helps Terry and his team make big plays from anywhere, even the tailgate, by pre-configuring Lenovo ThinkPads with the Intel Evo platform. With business class performance and effortless connectivity, Terry tosses over the files, and she's got them. Lenovo makes seamless productivity possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Lenovo client. CDW, official technology solutions advisor of the Chicago Bears. Football is back, and so is your chance to win with Bed River Sportsbook app. Featuring our new multi-game same-game parlay, combine the action of multiple same-game parlays in one bet for more action and bigger payouts. Bet the spread, bet the over, bet player props, and more. Throw in daily odds boost plus award-winning customer service, and it's a touchdown. Download it today. Must be 21 plus. Available in Illinois only. Void where prohibited. Terms and conditions apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, help is available. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Are your eco-friendly bulbs lit with eco-friendly power? IGS Energy now offers 100% green electricity and carbon neutral natural gas. Because every good choice adds up to a better world. We are IGS Energy. Join us and let's go green for good. Welcome back to Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy. Choose clean energy for your home at IGS.com because every good choice adds up to a better world. With Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, and now joined by Dan Pompey, the outstanding writer from The Athletic, a Hall of Famer himself, and on the committee for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It has been for many years, also on the senior committee, a group of nine. Dan, good evening. Happy New Year. How are you feeling, buddy? Hey, good to be with you guys tonight. I'm feeling great and uh, looking forward to... Talking some football with you. All right. And, and talking a little Hall of Fame, let's start out with that because uh, Devin Hester, a finalist again in the top 15, the final 15, I should say, which started, what, 129 players and then down to 28 in November, and now 15 for the second consecutive year. I know he was disappointed a year ago. How do you think he'll be feeling uh, come Super Bowl week, uh, the night before the Super Bowl, about uh, this particular chance? Well, you know, it's never – easy to tell at this point because, uh, as you know, there's just a lot of really good candidates there are this year uh, as there were last year. Um, and I think uh, that the field is tough. Now, Devin Hester, to me, is as strong as any of the candidates. But different people see it different ways. And the fact that he was a special teams player makes him an outlier. You know, there's nobody like him in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And um, some people will say that, look, special teams players only touch the ball a fraction of the amount of times that a player who's on the field uh, offensively or defensively 
does, or, or I should say they have more snaps and more abilities to, or more chances to impact the game. But what Hester did in those few chances was truly, truly special, as you guys know as well as anybody. And um, I think he really uh, – he's going to get in. I have no doubt about that. Just a matter of what year it's going to be. Hey, Dan, um, so when Devin Hester becomes a candidate for the Hall of Fame, what's a tougher argument, to get his name started or to get it finished? Well, I think it depends on on the candidate. You know, in Devin's case, it clearly is to get it finished um, because clearly he was a guy who belonged in, in the conversation, no doubt about it. Uh, there are other players who you have a hard time getting it started with. And, um, you know, that's that's tough when, when you can't even get a guy discussed. You can't even get him to the point where Devin is now, where he's one of the, time, the final 15. You know, um, that, that that is really difficult. But at least Devin is in that conversation. Last year he was not only in the top 15, he made it to the final 10. So that was a great uh, I think, uh, you know, a great sign of what could happen in the future for him because uh, that was his first year of eligibility. And I think, you know, now a lot of the voters have kind of expressed some hesitancy about putting first-year guys in. And uh, it works against certain players. Well, you know, you got a guy like Devin Hester who played a long time, was super successful at what he did, and I do think he belongs in the Hall of Fame. But then you have a guy like Patrick Willis who kind of quit in the middle of his prime, not quit, I just stopped playing in the middle of his prime and didn't have that, you know, long career that he would be an instant first ballot candidate. So who does Devin stand a better chance because he's played a longer time or does some of that hold back a guy like Willis because he didn't play a long time? Well, that's a good question. And, um, you know, I think what you're looking for in a Hall of Fame candidate possible so you look at tom brady when he comes up and you're going to say well there's not a single box he didn't check right because he he won he excelled individually he played forever uh you know he was at the most important position in the game uh you know he he succeeded with different teams i mean there's there's nothing the guy hasn't done i think everyone else you're dealing with today Probably there's maybe there's something I don't know. Joe Thomas is is pretty close to a perfect candidate, I think, and he's a first time guy. Um, Browns left tackle, um, but but I think everyone else, you know, maybe there's something you could you could ping him on and say, well, in the case of Patrick Willis, he he had a shortened career, uh, but it was a fantastic career. I think he was all pro five times, you know, which, which is kind of unheard of. So um, all these guys, I think that we're talking about this year really have excellent resumes. And I think uh, a a lot of them are going to end up in Canton. This is Dan Pompey from The Athletic here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, this is Bears All Access with Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, getting you ready for Bears-Vikings later on in the show as well. Earlier today, special teams coordinator Richard Hightower. I want to talk about what the Hall of Fame is supposed to represent. It's supposed to represent the best players at their position the best players that ever play the game. And I don't think there's a question that Devin is the best player in a returner position, in a combo returner position, with all the records that he holds, everything he did his rookie year, everything he's done, not only at the Bears and even when he goes somewhere else. This, I mean, he revolutionized the game of football and how coaches have to cover kicks now. So when you have a player as special as he is, I mean, I think he's only deserving for first ballot. Like, it just – who changed the game in the kick return game in the way he did other than a quarterback like a John Elway or Peyton Manning at their position? Who did it in the kick return position? It's not enough attention or credit to go to Devin. It's phenomenal what he was able to do. And it's still mind-boggling to see how good he actually was when you sit down and you study it. So I just think that's a no-brainer, and I hope it happens. 20 total return touchdowns, of course, a record, and 14 punt return touchdowns, a record. Uh, Five kickoffs, one missed field goal against the New York Giants. 
uh, and the most in a single season, uh, six in 2007. Uh, Dan, <clears throat> I saw, <laughs> you can't help but watch the highlights. I saw all 20 in some collage I saw on YouTube today, and uh, Coach is right. Uh, he just blew by people, and then interestingly what, the you know the the use of the term multiplier, which we hear about certain players, the multiplier angle on Devin was that everybody on that unit wanted to block for him, and the 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 guy who kept showing up on all these, and we probably talked about this a year ago, was thirty three Charles Tillman. He he was out there running shoulder to shoulder with him. I saw a massive block on one from Hunter Hillenmeyer. They they wanted to to be there and be a part of this that is absolutely certain and just running away and finding that uh, as he always told me he he looked for color and ran the other way uh, that was the jersey that he would run away from the opposing team's color you know to your point i think what devin did as well as any player uh was really just energize his team it's really rare for a player like him to be able to do that. Normally you think, well, there's some great quarterbacks who do that, right? You know, Patrick Mahomes does it. Uh, Tom Brady does it, Aaron Rodgers. But uh, maybe maybe some great running backs, you know, Walter. Um, there, there were some others. But very few players outside of that can really just get everyone all revved up and kind of change the momentum of a game with, with consistency the way he did. And he was a guy, I think, who every time uh, he took the field, the Bears felt like, or, or the Falcons or the other, the Seahawks and the Ravens, the two teams he played with the, at the end, you know, they, they felt like they had a chance to get a quick seven points and, and maybe win a game even if they weren't supposed to win. Um, you know, uh, he had more return touchdowns in games of seven points or less in the fourth quarter than any player since 1991. So, you know, he was a guy who could bring you back from a deficit or, or maybe, you know, if the score was tight or you had a slight lead, he could put it away. And um, you know, that, was, that was a special part of what he brought to the Bears. And I know anyone who ever sat in Soldier Field when he was returning felt that electricity in the air when he, when he went back there and, and he, get, he was waiting for a kick or a punt. You know, Dan, outside of Cordero Patterson, uh, this may be the last player, special teams player, returner considered for the Hall of Fame because kickoff returns are so, are so frequently turned down nowadays, and you're just not getting what that big play used to uh, promote, used to excite crowds like you talked about. So, you know, Devin and maybe Cordero, they could be last of the last of those type of return guys. Well, yeah, and I think uh, I, I don't think there'll ever be another Devin Hester. I mean, I, I think uh, he's he's really pretty unique in NFL history, and um, you know the the fact that uh, I mean there have been other great returners like Deion Sanders and Gail Sayers, um, Brian Mitchell, uh, but I think most of those guys ended up doing different things. You know, Hester was just singularly great as a returner, which is why, you know, when the NFL put together their all-time team for the 100th anniversary, the player that they picked to return kicks was Devin Hester. And he's also, you know, he's also a two-time all-decade performer, uh, which, which really says something, too. I mean, his, his uh, credentials are, are just so rare. I know, Jeff, you mentioned that he scored 20 special teams touchdowns. That's... 30% more than anyone in NFL history. 30% more. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, you, you you certainly have your notes out, right? So, have you is, <laughs> we're going to go to a, we're going to go to a break and talk about some other things, but have you spoken to him lately? I have not spoken to him lately. I plan on giving him a call next week. You know, we talked uh, a few times last year uh, leading up to uh, uh, the vote and afterwards and um, there was only so much I can say to him at this point, but uh, you know, I just want to assure him that um, I'm doing the best I can, and I, I think that uh, the voters all take his case seriously, and I believe he's got a good chance. 
Dan Pompey, our guest, will return with more. We'll talk about some other hot topics in the league right now, including the Bears after a break on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. What do you call a group of friends decked out in orange and blue who hug and toast with Miller Lite after every great play and in between endless choruses of the Bears? You call it Miller Time in Chicago. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2022 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Football legends weren't born making game-changing touchdowns. They started out like the rest of us, playing with the neighborhood kids. And while it wasn't the playground or the local field that made them great, those places did give them the opportunity to become great. At PNC, we believe every kid deserves a place to play and learn. Over the years, we've teamed up with the Chicago Bears to give the kids of Chicago learning resource centers that spark curiosity. PNC Bank and the Chicago Bears, just one way we're making a difference. The PNC Financial Services Group, Inc., all rights reserved. This isn't the start. Before I got here, I started training. And before that, I did something to my back. But my first move was Athletico Physical Therapy. That's where I'd eventually end up. So why not start there? I mean, my therapist immediately found the source of my pain. These are the same physical therapists who work with elite marathon runners. So soon, I was back to running, but without pain. (sighs) You got this. It all starts at Athletico. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees, thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. Mercedes-Benz of Hoffman Estate sets the goal line high when it comes to customer satisfaction. With over 600 vehicles on our lot, selection is key. Hi, I'm Mike Connolly, General Manager of Mercedes-Benz of Hoffman Estates, and we tackle customer satisfaction head-on with the right inventory of both new and pre-driven vehicles, and we ship all over the United States. If you're in the market for a new Mercedes-Benz, then schedule a visit with one of our team members. We're a proud partner of the Chicago Bears on Golf Road, just west of Roselle Road, or visit us at MercedesHoffman.com. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy. Visit athletico.com to request an appointment in clinic or virtually and start feeling better tomorrow. With Tom Thayer, Jeff Joniak, this is Bears All Access, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score with Adam Stadzinski, our producer, and Dan Pompey. Another segment with the Hall of Fame writer. Dan, uh, so many topics in so little time. Let's start with your impression of the Buffalo Bills' safety uh, and this situation, which is getting better news by the day, and DeMar Hamlin certainly has uh, entered the hearts and minds of everybody uh, involved in sports, let alone the National Football League. What are your impressions of this story? Well, certainly, uh, you know, it, it's great news that he continues to improve, and I think uh, everyone is really uplifted by that. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen a story in American sports where, you know, the whole country just kind of stopped and was sitting there and saying, gosh, we're, you know, we're praying for this guy. We're hoping for the best. I think it's a great example of the way sports can unite people and bring out the best. And, um, you know, obviously that's something we can appreciate now that DeMar looks like he's going to recover or he's doing well. Um, but, you know, from the from the point that he was lying on the field and uh, Zach Taylor went up to Sean McDermott and, you know, the, the players were kneeling in prayer around him uh, to to now when, you know, um, the, the fans and, and, and the media and, you know, Twitter and everything, social media, everybody is just um, kind of consumed with how is DeMar doing? Is there an update? And, uh it's uh, it's it's been a a, a really kind of a nice angle to a potentially a story that really could have been horrific. You know what, Dan? I I keep saying to Jeff is we went from watching a game to immediately be involved in real life. And I was listening to an interview of one of the players from Buffalo, and he said he doesn't know if he's ever heard the Cincinnati Stadium louder than it was that night. Hmm. And then you talk about the reaction, the immediacy 
of that that poor kid going down and how quiet the fan base got. It was really something how, um, it, you know, the emotions were almost reflected in the non-sound inside the stadium that minutes ago it was packed and loud, and then now it's 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 packed and as quiet as you can get. So it, w- it was a crazy reflection to the fans that were inside the stadium, let alone, you know, all of us that were watching on TV. Yeah, I think it, it points out, you know, we, we all think that uh, we, these games are the end of the world, right? That was a huge game. Maybe a AFC uh, championship conference uh, uh, playoff preview uh, and, uh, you know, it's two great quarterbacks, two teams uh, on a roll. And, um, you know, it turns out that the game really isn't that important after all. It doesn't even have to be played. It, it looks like now it's not going to be played. Um, I think it was a good dose of perspective for for everybody. What do you think should uh, happen with this, the game itself? Well, should, is, is, is we just call it a tie and move on, or because there's no easy answer, right? No, there's not. Uh, you know what I'd really like to see happen is uh, the game to be to be played in full next week. And then every all all the playoff games pushed back with the bye week eliminated before the Super Bowl, but that's apparently not going to happen. What they're saying now is that uh, it looks like the game will not be played, and uh, they're they're going to give uh, the the team. Uh, I, I think the Bills are going to get their choice of whether they they want a bye or they want uh, a home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And then you know the the uh, the next team would would get the uh, uh, the next choice. So you know, I, to me, it's a little complicated and crazy. I, I think it could have been solved uh, with a little easier if they just would have played the game and eliminated the bye week. But this is the way they want to do it, apparently. All right, Dan, let's get a little closer to home because I can't let you go without asking you about Justin. Play or no play? Are you glad he's not playing? Did you want to see him play? Did you think the reps were important, or are you okay with him going into the off season guaranteed, healthy, and ready to roll? You know, I wanted to see him play. I think he needs to play. I think there's it was an opportunity for him to learn, improve, and he needs all those opportunities. And um, you know, unless he he truly is injured to the point where he wouldn't have played if the game meant something. Well, then it's different. But um, I, uh, you know, I mean, what does it say that, you know, he's not playing, but, you know, you're going to send the other guys out. You're going to send David Montgomery out there. And you're going to, you know, send send all the other guys. I, I just think uh, you can't play the game of football worried about injuries. You know, you have to go out there and, and just let it all go and, and, uh, you know, trust that the best will happen. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think that's a guy who, who needs to play. Andrew Janoko, the Bears coach. This is Dan Pompey, by the way, from the, the Outstanding Writer. Andrew Janoko, the quarterback coach, meeting the media this afternoon here at Hallis Hall, uh, talked about one of the key elements of the what they got to know about Justin Fields this year and what it means. He wants this to be his franchise. He wants this to be his city. Um, you know, he can, just the way he works. I mean, you spend five minutes with the kid, and you know that. I mean, he's a, he's a dude. Like he's a, he's a dog. He's an alpha. So, um, so really, me just you know, you spend you know, spend a little bit of time with him. You know, hey, this guy, he wants to be it. Now he goes into meetings according to Janoko, Dan, and Tom uh, already with a list of things he knows he did not do well in any particular game. What he like to work on? Uh, very. Uh, cognizant of of that kind of uh, progress that yet needs to be obtained, and uh, I think that's important. I think the importance of having Matt Eberflus in those quarterback meetings every week is also important. Uh, being a defensive minded coach, and uh, but being the CEO of the football team at the moment, and how this works with uh, former coordinators, I think it was a, a, the right move. Uh, overall, obviously, we all know, and they even referred to it today yes they have the number one rushing offense but the number 32 passing offense uh, Luke Getze prefers to look at it as I'm not worried about that I'm worried about what's available to me each and every week player wise and what we need to do 
to get a win. It doesn't matter what aspect of the game needs to be emphasized. But we all know that, yes, that passing game element and, and those type of things need need still to be developed. You know, it was probably the worst passing performance of the year last week. So that was another reason that I would have liked to have seen him play Sunday against the Vikings because it would have been a chance to end the season on a, on a better note, you know, to have a little feel-good going into the off season, But this off season is huge for Fields. You know, now he's played a whole year. Uh, so he can look at all the tape and say, uh, as you were saying, he does week to week. He could do that for a whole season now and say, these are the, the aspects of my game that I really need to work on. And it's also huge from the standpoint that uh, he, he'll hopefully be able to have some new players around him to work with in the off season, you know, some, some veteran receivers as well as some, some rookies maybe uh, who can help lift him uh, because certainly that was an issue this year with the talent around him not being up to snuff. So, um, you know, I think th- this really is the, the off season where he's going to determine who he's going to be for the rest of his career. You know, Dan, the first time within his career, his mature career, being in the same system terminology two years in a row, I think that will be the one element that will help him most in his second year and hopefully become the passing quarterback that we'd all like to see. Absolutely, and that's that's assuming that uh, Luke Getzey returns, but I think that's probably a good assumption at this point. And, uh, you know, that's an underrated aspect of a quarterback success. I mean, you know, you look at, at some of the most successful quarterbacks in the league, and most of them are ones who have been in the same system for many, many years. You know, Patrick Mahomes has been in the same system his whole NFL career. Uh, Rodgers has been pretty much, you know, it, obviously there was, a, there was a, a big change from Mike McCarthy to Matt LaFleur, but a lot of the offensive principles stay the same. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, even Tom Brady, when he went to Tampa, uh, they, they did a lot of things that he wanted to do in, in the offense. So, um, you know, I, I think that's, uh, that's part of it. And, and yeah. uh, yeah, they have to, you know, they have to keep the continuity for this guy. Yeah. i tell you what, it's, it's not underrated. To me, it's critical because I'm with you. I, I, you just can't keep, changing things and terminology and system because it just resets a different clock not the financial clock but that's also a factor in this as well all right lastly uh virginia hallis mccaskey turning 100 today i i saw some video back from the 100 celebration that we all enjoyed and you and of course uh don pearson uh penned a, a fabulous keepsake history of the bears franchise and we all had that round table with Mrs. McCaskey and, and George McCaskey, and that was a fun, fun experience, some great stories, and uh, I know she means a lot to you as well. She does, and I think she means a lot to anybody who's had some time with her, and, and uh, I've been fortunate to have spent some time with her, especially uh, doing that that book that we did for the centennial uh, celebration, uh, Don, Don and I interviewed her for, for many hours, and it was a great privilege to do that. And, uh, you know, that, that she made it to 100 really, I guess, shouldn't be surprising um, because because she's seen so much. And it, it just, you know, I, it's hard to imagine the Bears and the NFL without her. She, you know, I, there's nobody like her, nobody like her in sports who has been around from basically the inception until, you know, modern times. And uh, she, she reminds me a little bit, the only person I can draw a parallel between her and someone else is, is with Queen Elizabeth. I mean, you know, Queen Elizabeth, having seen everyone from Harry Truman to, you know, the, the current times in, in England with Brexit and everything else, I mean, she. There, to me, there's a parallel there, and and she certainly is royalty to the Chicago Bears. No better word spoken, right there, Big Dan. Nice job as usual. Thanks for joining us. All right. Okay. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Dan Pompey will break. Coming up next, Pete Bursich, the analyst of the Minnesota Vikings, will join us next here on Bears All Access. I'm brought to you, brought to you by IGS Energy on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The Score. 
Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. Bears fans, how do you start your game day? Every game day should start with Tostitos, chips, and dip. Or even better, hot Italian beef nachos. Spice up your game day and rep your fandom all season long with the Tostitos hot Italian beef nachos recipe. Made especially for Bears fans. Just head to Tostitos.com slash recipes for details. You can also add all the ingredients to your cart online directly from your favorite retailer. This message is Brought to you by Tostitos, the official chip and dip of the NFL. Go Bears! From bridges and trains to iconic high-rises, have you ever wondered who's powering Chicago? Power Unlike our sports heroes, they go unnoticed. Yet they proudly keep our businesses, homes, and great city running. IBEW Local 134 electricians and the electrical contractors have the experience, training, and reliability to keep Chicago open for business. It's game time, but before Terry can enjoy his broad, he's got one last thing to digest, an impending work deadline. Luckily, CDW helps Terry and his team make big plays from anywhere, even the tailgate, by pre-configuring Lenovo ThinkPads with the Intel Evo platform. With business class performance and effortless connectivity, Terry tosses over the files, and she's got them. Lenovo makes seamless productivity possible. CDW makes it powerful. Learn more at cdw.com slash Lenovo client. CDW, official technology solutions advisor of the Chicago Bears. Holiday gifts are only as good as the network they're on. So give your family the gift of Verizon. Only Verizon gives you a free 5G phone with select trade-in and select 5G unlimited plans and another gift, like a tablet, smartwatch, and earbuds, all on us. A service plan is required for gifts, only on the network America relies on. Verizon. 5G phone, up to $999.99 device payment purchase or full retail purchase with new or upgrade smartphone line required. Less up to $1,000 trade-in slash promo credit applied over 36 months, 0% APR. Additional terms and conditions apply. Visit verizon.com for offer details. This segment of Bears All Access is brought to you by CDW People Who Get It. Jeff Joniak and Tom Thayer joined by Pete Bursich here in a moment as the Bears get ready for the Minnesota Vikings. Um, you know, the game is week 18. The Bears trying to avoid a 10th straight loss, Tom, and I know there's a, a lot of discussion about uh, the Justin Fields' absence for this game. Not medically cleared, according to uh, Matt Eberflus, uh, but just a, another round of players that are, are not going to be able to play either, so you know, how that offensive line stacks up for this final game. And I read something, I'm trying to remember who it was now, but uh, I wish I would have wrote it down because, uh, oh, I know what it was. It, it's Sam Howell, the, the, the quarterback that's going to get a chance to start in Washington, the rookie out of North Carolina. They ask him, you know, how big is right. this? And he goes, it's the biggest, and it should be for every player on this team. And that's that is the fantasy that everybody wants to think that every team thinks this way for the final game because it, it, it is important to each individual as long as it is important to that individual. Otherwise, we we know what happens. But I think this group is going to play hard. Uh, there's a lot of guys on this team hey, Jeff, that are coming back next year. The there's there's a different role of importance to this game than it's kind of an underlying issue. So you know. Luke Getze installed an offense that has a certain structure of throwing the ball and how it leaves the hand of the quarterback and where it's going to go from the play called. And Justin is more of an ad-lib quarterback where sometimes it may not fall in the exact structure of the offense and he kind of falls into a plan in place. What happens if Peterman goes out there and throws for 275 yards and the offense looks super efficient getting the ball out of his hands and down the field? And then that's going to kind of tell you where Justin needs to go with his game, but it also kind of lets you know what this offense could be capable of. So I think there's a, a, a couple different narratives at the end of the game that we could be talking about if Nathan Peterman does go off and have one of the, these games that he's had before in the NFL. And also because of some injuries and stuff going on at Minnesota, you don't, you don't know how they're going to play. 
Yeah, they have offensive line issues as well. Uh, the defense is struggling a bit, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get to Pete here in just a bit to, to talk more about that. But uh, they're fighting still. They, they they have a shot at the number two seed, and so you know they're going to be in the top four unless my math is wrong. Uh, but you know they have a lot to prove too because of how their season has gone. They've come back eight times in the fourth quarter, so they've showed resilience. The passing game has been outstanding. Running game, solid. Defense, not so much, especially against the pass. And I don't know how that sits with them, especially given what happened last week against Green Bay. Where are they at heading into the playoffs? We'll have to take the temperature of Pete. Before we get to Pete, why don't we take one more break? This is Bears All Access. It's brought to you by IGS Energy here on Chicago Sports Radio 670 The Score. You're one of the lucky ones. You were born a Bears fan. Your Sunday best is always blue and orange, and Sunday dinner is always eaten around a pop tailgate. And now you're even luckier because with the Chicago Bears PNC Bank Visa debit card, you can get special discounts on certain Bears merch and concessions. Show you're a Bears fan from the gear you wear to the card you carry. PNC Bank. Passion pays. For details on discounts and other offers, visit pnc.com slash Bears card. Visa is a registered trademark of Visa International Service Association and used under license. Copyright 2021 PNC Bank National Association member FDIC. Connie's Pizza has been Chicago's go-to pizza for over 50 years. Call 312 Connie's with pizza options including classic Chicago deep dish, stuffed, thin crust, and our original Connie's Pan Pizza. Connie's is home to Chicago's Pizza. Call 312 Connie's and visit Connie's Pizza with a whole family and big groups. And visit before and after Chicago Bears games, utilizing our shuttle buses to and from all home games. We're located just six minutes from the stadium and have enough parking for everyone. Connie's Pizza is your go-to pizza for Chicago pizza. Call 312 Connie's and order today. Traveling to an away game to watch the Bears win big? Get ready to celebrate. Celebrated a little too much? Time to sleep in. Slept in and gonna miss that flight home? Time to change your flight without paying change fees thanks to United. So, when will you worry about getting back? Tomorrow? Maybe? United, proud to fly the Chicago Bears. Does not include basic economy unless a United waiver applies. Exceptions apply for certain international flights. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series, drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. What do you call a group of friends decked out in orange and blue who hug and toast with Miller Lite after every great play and in between endless choruses of the Bears? You call it Miller Time in Chicago. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2022 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Calling all Bears fans, get the ultimate VIP fan package with Chicago Bears VIP. Secure a game ticket and appearance from Bears legends and more by visiting ChicagoBearsVIP.com on late notice. Our good pal and Chicago area native high school star, Notre Dame stud, former Viking, Pete Bursich. (laughs) One more time to talk Bears, Vikings, and NFC North. I certainly love how the NFL puts the uh, divisions on notice in the final couple weeks of the season and uh, get some frustrations out, I guess, before... Next season, if you're not fortunate enough to be in the playoff picture, but you guys are going to the playoffs. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. How you doing? And uh, where are you guys at right now? Uh, it's been the most interesting yet peculiar season. If you're looking from the outside in at the Vikings, yeah, it's well, yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy uh, as as far as just the way the season has gone, the stats, the you know. The wins, um, you know, you have 12 wins, 11 of which are by one touchdown or less, and then you have four losses. You know, it, it, it's unbelievable. But you know, one by 17, uh, one by 37, and then one by what 24. I mean, it's so it's like either you win by a score or you lose big. <laughs> it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Is you know, as far as the season goes. So, um, you know, I, as far as you know, we do have the opportunity to move up if um, if San Francisco, you know, decides to st- you know trip themselves on Arizona. Uh, I doubt that's going to happen. 
but for the most part, yeah, it'll be it'll be one home playoff game, and if you win that one, then it's going to be on the road somewhere. So um, most likely. So yeah, it, it's it's been. To make the playoffs, I think, was uh, on the higher side of expectations. I don't think anybody really expected them to win, us to win the division uh, the way we did. Uh, but uh, overall, um, you know, the offense, I think, is, is, is humming along pretty nicely for the most part. Now that we have a couple injuries, that may change. But, uh, you know, defensively, not quite where we want to be. Hey, Pete, um, when you look at the trade for T.J. Hawkinson, I think it really surprised a lot of us inside the division just because those trades rarely happen. Was it a trade that you guys needed to make, number one, and is it turning the, is it giving you guys the dividends in which you thought it, it the impact he would have? Um, you know what, I think, yeah, we needed a tight end. I mean, and we needed an answer uh I think if you want to look at it in a, you know narrowly, you say, hey, we needed an answer for when teams wanted to play man um, or man and a half, let's say, over Justin Jefferson with two man, things like that. Um, so you needed someone who could, on average, win one-on-one matchups uh, and you know, keep the chains moving. And I think that's what Hawkinson you know, has been. I mean, he's, he's had over 1,400 yards of receiving this year, and he's had nine total touchdowns if you count – his combined efforts between uh, us and, you know, and one in, De- and in Detroit. So he's had a pretty darn good season, albeit with two different teams. But I think, uh, you know, he's a, he's a good blocker, not a, you know, not a great one, but a good one. Um, and I think he fits what this team wants to do, uh, you know, through the air. So I, you know, I, I do think he was, he was a pretty good get. Um, he's only 25 years old. Uh, so I, yeah, I think, I think it was a pretty, it was a pretty good move, um, you know, on behalf of the team and, uh, Koizy Adolfo Mensa to bring him into the mix. And he's been a pretty, pretty good part of this offense. Hey, well, you, you look at what your offensive line is going to be comprised of this week after a couple injuries. You know, the Bears' defensive line, honestly, they haven't gotten a lot of pressure on the opponent's quarterback. They are not getting multiple sacks. So is this the perfect off the perfect opportunity for your offensive line that could go into the playoffs to play against this defense on the road, natural grass field, all the types of issues that you guys don't face very often? Yeah, I know you, you, you're right about that. I think, uh, you know, as far as who's going to start at center, I'm not really sure. Um, Ole Udo will probably pick up the right tackle position. He finished up against Green Bay. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, for this offense, you, you know, there, there are a lot of opportunities. You guys are unbelievably young in the secondary, um, you know, and then up front, uh, you know, not a lot of sacks, not a lot of pressure on the quarterback. So, yeah, this would be, you know, we we I've been kind of waiting for us to to run the football. We've been we've I've sat in that booth for years and watched Dalvin Cook be a third of the entire offense, right? It's just, you know, run the ball with Dalvin Cook, play action off play action off of him. And it really hasn't been that way. We're a, we're a pass first team, right? So the, you know, the lose Brian O'Neal uh, to an Achilles injury is 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 pretty is is a pretty big deal. I mean, we have to be able to protect Cousins. Cousins is not scramble extend the play find somebody open down the field and do that he's a get to the top of his drop go through his progression and if somebody's there he's going to throw it so uh protecting him in this system is is huge and you know we'll get we'll get a chance i think for those guys to play together at least one game uh, you know before we hit the playoffs but uh as far as that goes we're you know, we, you know, will Garrett Bradbury be back? You know, we have no, you know, have no idea. Hopefully he can be back for the playoff game. But uh, in the meantime, you know, your guess is as good as mine about who's going to be playing center. <laughs> All right. Now let's go to the other side of the ball. And you think of Ed Donatel and some of the games that he gave up at the latter part of the season. Is this a, a scheme that needs changes made to it or do they need players to play better? Um, I, I think he just, you know, you have to have the right kind of personnel um, to play, you know, this this Donatel defense the way, you know, the way that they, they want it done or the way he wants it done. And it's it's a, it's a little difficult, you know. I mean, Daniel Hunter has ten and a half sacks. You know, he's, he's, 
he obviously a good pass rusher, but he's not as physical on the outside as Darius Smith. So against the run, you know, it's not quite it's not quite what you know what you want out there. And then you know in the middle, you know you, you know Harrison Phillips has done a really good job. I think Dalvin Tomlinson's the guy that ended up making the transition from a four three. You know, he was a four three guy with the Giants. Played a little zero nose when they go to a bear front or something like that. But he's he's really become a good a good run stuffer. Um, we're just missing, I think, that that guy up front that can just you know one on one win eighty ninety percent of the time. And then with the lack of physicality, I think sometimes with Daniel Hunter on the outside, that that just allows our running game, um, you know, to give up a little bit too much on the ground. Eric Kendricks. Um, is, you know, has had a good has had a good season. Um, I believe he's he has one sack and that's it. You know, no interceptions. Jordan Hicks has done a pretty good job for us. Uh, we're also getting the rookie Brian Osmoli in from you know from uh, you know Oklahoma. He's getting in there. He's making a couple play. He's made some plays. So, you know, I think overall, you know, we're we're not a young defense. Patrick Peterson's been around a long time. Um, you know, Harrison Smith's been around a long time. So, you know, I don't know if we need to, you know, do the full youth movement, so to speak, but I just think we need a little more, a little more juice inside defensively, you know, to play a seven man box and then stop the run consistently. Final moments with Pete Bursich, our guest here on Chicago Sports Radio 670. The score, the veteran analyst of the Minnesota Vikings. <clears throat> All right. So uh, the Packers, the dangerous, most dangerous team in the, in the league right now? No. <laughs> no. no, four in a no, row no. and home against Detroit listen, when they never listen, lose in December tell, and listen, January. You tell me, you tell me another team that's had eight turnovers in the last two weeks. I mean, Miami had them yeah. on the ropes, and if not for Tua being concussed and throwing the ball to them three times in the second half, you know they wouldn't have won that game. And then against us, you know, we'll, what, what you know, what are we going to do? We you know we we throw. We give up two touchdowns in the first half, and neither of them were on. You know, were when right. their team was on the field, right? We have a, yeah. you know, we get a block punt and only get a field goal out of it, and then they they return the kickoff for a touchdown and have a pick six for a touchdown, which oh by the way is the play that Brian O'Neill, our starting right tackle, got hurt. So we've started slowly. That's been our. It's been a bit of our problem, you know, over the last I'd say four or five weeks. If there's something there, it's. We just don't start quickly in offense and in, in defense. We just, for some reason, take a while to get going, and we just, you know, let the Packers kind of run away with that one. Yeah. So, well, let me um, tell you, let me interrupt you. Wait, wait, let me interrupt you. Wait, no, I, I, I'm glad you said that. I, I, I don't want them to win. I, I don't, but they, you know, well, just something. See that team win, something. I mean, something's up. You know, you got, you know, w- when you got twelve and it's playoffs and it's fine. You know, I don't know. Just, uh, you know, keeping an well, eye on know, it. How about a, that? And we got, we got to run here, but they got a good running game. But Rogers is the one he used to be. So yeah, we'll leave now, it at that. Don't, give me, yeah. right, give me, ju- care, wait, wait, just give me one minute, one minute. That's all you got because oh, okay. there's publish because we got to go. But publish yeah. reports about. Big Ten Commissioner Kevin Warren, uh, reportedly a candidate for the Bears uh, president and CEO job. He worked uh, two decades there in Minnesota. Give me 30 seconds on Kevin Warren. Um, I can make it even shorter than that. You can't find a better man to take that position. Kevin Warren was great for this for the Vikings franchise. I mean, look, just look at the leaps and bounds that that that, that our franchise had made uh, with the new stadium, with the new facility. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, he's, he's, a, you know, he's, he, he has the vision. Um, he has the experience for what I think may, you know, you may want to have happen if you want to move to Arlington. Um, you know, I think for, you know, for Chicago and Chicago Bears, he, he's going to be a perfect fit. All right. We'll see where it goes. Hey, happy All new right. year, buddy. Hopefully see you in All Hinsdale right. one of these man. days. Take care. All I'll right. See you Sunday. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. And Sunday. See you, right? <laughs> That's going to do it for us, Tom. Final thoughts. Uh, you know, just looking forward to the Nathan Peterman show come Sunday. He's excited about embracing the opportunity. Want to thank everybody, including Dan Pompey, Pete Zerchers, my buddy Tom Thayer, and our producers, including Adam Staczynski in the Score Studios. That'll do it for us. This is Bears All Access on Chicago Sports Radio, 670 The Score. Thanks for listening, everybody. Good night.
Thanks for listening to this Chicago Bears Network presentation of Bears All Access. Podcasts are available on chicagobears.com and on iTunes or download the official Bears mobile app. Bears All Access has been brought to you by IGS Energy and sponsored by Miller Lite.